Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's RC and I would like to welcome you to Match of the Day presented by Man and Blazer. This is episode one of our Football Manager 21 series and we are taking a look at the opening match from the Premier League week for the 2020-21 season. If you don't know what the save is about, I suggest you go back and check out the intro video that I put up the other day and then come back to this one. I'll put the link in the description below and uh, just want to welcome you guys uh, to the new save. So let's roll the intro and get into the business of the day. Well, hey guys, it's RC. Thanks for tuning in. As I mentioned, this is Match of the Day, and it is presented by me, the man in blazer. So uh, we are taking a look uh, at the Premier League. This is a season preview look. So Man City is odds-on favorites at 6-5 to five to win the league. Last year's defending champion Liverpool is at 15-8 to eight odds. And there you see the rest of the European places uh, rounded out by Arsenal in 6th. Leicester, Wolves, Everton, just outside of that. Leeds is picked to be 300 to 1 to finish mid table, uh, the top promoted side from the championship last year to finish mid table. Also joining them in the Premier League, Fulham and West Brom are early favorites to go back down to the championship this year. Crystal Palace, Newcastle, Burnley also picked to be in that relegation battle. Uh, taking a look at the top players, Kevin De Bruyne from Man City, Harry Kane, Tottenham, Virgil van Dijk at Liverpool, uh, Sadio Mane at Liverpool, Sergio Aguero at Man City, and I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Sun Hung Min, maybe, maybe. I know who he is, Sonny. Uh, I, I, watched the, I watched the documentary on Amazon Prime. Uh, he's at Tottenham. Paul Pogba at Man United. Um, anyway, there's what uh, there's your top players. Uh, as I mentioned, we do uh, we are going with the default save starting at the very you know basically opening the game with the winter patch update. Uh, transfer activity: there's been one and a half billion in total transfers, uh, led by Chelsea spending 163 million dollars, bringing in seven players, moving 12 players out. And Burnley, the lowest, uh, 8.11 in revenue. Uh, I guess that's income. 13 players in, 11 players out. Actually, no, I guess uh, no, that's net transfer. So yeah, Burnley spent 8.1. Chelsea made 163 million. That's not bad for uh, still being top of the table, right? Uh, let's see. New head coaches: Thomas Tush Tuckle, Tuchel, Tuchel. At Chelsea, uh, he comes from Paris Saint Germain, and Sam Allardyce uh, is at West Brom, previously at Everton at some point in his life. <laughs> All right, so again, this is kind of a work in progress. Any tips or suggestions or ideas that you guys have, let me know in the comments how we can structure this. So, this is going to be a match of the day style. We, I am not going to be managing a team. We will be looking at all the clubs in the Premier League, and then we'll spot check some of the other top leagues, Spain, Germany, Italy, and France. But if we go back into the Premier League, opening day, there's your scores. And we are going to focus on two here this week on this episode. Uh, Chelsea, uh, who, of course, we just saw was picked to finish in third. Brighton near the bottom in the bottom half of the table. And so there was a 3 0 win by Chelsea, a dominant performance by them, as we would expect from those preseason expectations. So we can see the stats. Chelsea had 18 shots. Brighton only managed two shots, did not get one on target. XG of 3.66 to a 0.15. Uh, Zayak with a goal in the early moment. 
Uh, Werner looks like he missed a penalty. James uh, scored the second, and Werner did get on the score sheet uh, with a shot from the field uh, right before half. Let's take a look at some of the rumors uh, making the round right now. Tottenham looking at Latoro Martinez from Inter. $184 million price tag on him, and Tottenham could be in the market for a striker. Also, look, Tottenham must be wanting someone to replace Harry Kane, I'm thinking, because they're also looking at several other strikers uh, in here. At Atlanta's 29-year-old Luis Muriel and Valencia's $27.5 million Maxi Gomez. So interesting news there at Tottenham. Let's jump into them and take a look at the squad. And we're looking for Harry Kane. All right, he's not in the road in the roster today. He's not showing injured or anything. He's only 27 years old. I guess they could drop that much for a player in depth, but that's interesting news and wanted to share that with you guys. PSG possibly coming in for Man City defender John Stones, an $81 million deal being bandied about and a couple of coaching moves as well. Taking a look at the current standings, Man United atop the table with seven points. Wolves right there with them, followed by Chelsea and Fulham, a surprise early showing at the top of the table. Burnley, Man City, and Leicester round out the top seven. Leeds mid-table and Everton, Crystal Palace, and Sheffield United currently finding lacking in the results. Aston Villa there in the relegation battle as well. Sheffield United has already conceded seven goals in three matches. The first highlight of the day will come from Man City taking on Brighton. You can see Man City won this one 3-1. to one. It was their first win of the season. Two draws and a loss in their first four matches leading up to this one. 17 shots, seven on target. Goals from Raheem Sterling, Gabriel Jesus and then Sterling adding a second goal in the 85th minute. Sterling took possession in his own half of the field, blows past the line, and then just inside the edge of the box, powers it past Sanchez, a beautiful goal. Mindy tried one pass, got the second one in, and Sterling assists to Gabriel Jesus, and he makes it 2-0. Brighton would get onto the board here. Maupe Bounced it off the upright and then got the rebound, making it three, two to one, Man City. And then late in the game, Yao Cancelo, Bernardo over the top, and Sterling with a beautiful header from the edge of the six yard box for the final goal, making it 3 1, Man City. As we mentioned, their first win of the season. Two draws against Tottenham, Aston Villa, and then draw, uh, losing on penalties to Everton in the Carabao Cup third round. Not a good showing in the Cup. Not the Cup they're really going for. Of course, the FA Cup kicks off for them in January. Fulham and Burnley played a 2-1 match. Burnley winning at home. Uh, Fulham was the better team here, but Burnley walked away with the points. What was interesting about this one, Burnley and Fulham are right next to each other, number four and number five in the table. This was Fulham's first loss of the season after winning their opening two matches. It was a downpour. Burnley starts it off and a deflection off of Anderson, but it doesn't matter. Any ball in the net counts as a goal, makes it 1-0 Burnley. A crossover to McNeil. He picks it up on the spot and gives Burnley a 2-0 advantage. Lookman gets away from a tackle. Loftus Cheek into Mitrovic inside the box, and he slots it home for a nice poacher goal, and that was the 2-1 final for Burnley to win. So you can see Burnley now six points. Fulham with a plus-three goal differential holding on there. And we jump over to two other clubs that should be competing for the league title this year, Spurs and Liverpool, playing in Tottenham. Harry Kane up top for the home side, 
and Roberto Firmino for Liverpool in the striker position. Pretty evenly matched game. What's interesting here, the 2-2 draw. Neither club has won a match in the league this year. Two draws for each of them against no wins and no draws. And on the Sunday match, Chelsea destroys West Ham 6-0 to move to the top of the table. A perfect three wins from three matches and a plus 12 goal differential. Let's jump into the highlights for that one. West Ham finding themselves down near the relegation places here in the early going. 26 shots. Chelsea just dominated this match. A brace from Werner. Also a brace from Zayech. Thiago Silva and Chilwell also contributing goals to the cause. Jesse Lingard playing a 5.9, having a rough go of it today against the Blues. Some good buildup. Beautiful through ball to Werner, and he beats Fabianski. Then Vert Werner with the penalty makes it 2 0. Mount with a big bending ball off the set piece. Tiago Silva finds the header, makes it 3 0. A beautiful goal by Zayech off the set piece from the edge of the box, makes it 4 0 Chelsea. And you can see some big ball movement. And that was just a nice little chip ball. Chilwell really placed that with some accuracy. And Zayich with another set piece from outside the box. He looks real deadly and could score a lot of goals looking like that. One has to wonder, is West Ham really that bad? And are they going to be in trouble this year? Or was this just a one-off for them? Two draws and a loss. Hard to say at this point. It is early in the season. Sterling with the sh shining performance at Manchester Stadium. Werner sends Chelsea to the top. Let's jump over to a couple of others just to keep you in the loop. Real Madrid and Valencia, top of the table in Spain. Bayern Munich, and uh, two points up on Borussia Dortmund, FC Köln, Eintracht Frankfurt. Quite a few teams in there with four points, but it's Bayern Munich out to the early lead. In Serie A, Inter with six points from two matches. Uh, Juventus and Napoli and a handful of other teams sitting on four. Over in France, it's PSG, 16 points. Lille in second position with 15. Monaco with 14. A lot of points piling up there, but a plus 17 goal differential for PSG. Let's pop in and look at their top goal scorer. Of course, it is as you would expect to be. Kylian Mbappe with four goals from six, but he has been equalized by Juan Bernat. Uh, one of their, I don't know if he's playing defender or attacking. Let's find out. Unfortunately, it's not telling me there. Not giving me that information. If you guys do know where to find that, I know it's usually in here. Possibly if I shortlisted him, but I don't want to shortlist a bunch of players. So uh, anyway, not sure what, oh, you know where we could look maybe? So Bernat is playing on the back line, wing back on the left. So four goals from that position is pretty solid, uh, as well as a bunch of players, four players with two goals, and they are a goal-scoring machine. I'll also leave these up here. You can pause it and look at the, uh, you know, look at League One, League Two, and the championship if you want. I do have those listed uh, as playable leagues, so we can look at that, mainly because I want to be able to keep track of clubs moving up and down into and down from the Premier League. So that's going on there. Guys, we're going to call that an episode. Uh, you know, again, this is kind of what we're going to do. We're going to look at a couple of matches. You know, I'm thinking two or three matches. Go through the tables. Look at uh, some highlights. Uh, I guess one thing I wanted to do was also pop in here. And we can look at the goal scoring leaders. Uh, Zayic with four from Chelsea is the leader. Timo Werner with three. Raheem Sterling with three. Uh, Zayic. Uh, the highest average rating. Kai Havertz from Chelsea with three assists leading the way. Burnley's Charlie Taylor, uh, one of a handful of players with two player of the match awards. Uh, Mindy from Chelsea with three clean sheets. And quite a few players already on two yellow cards. 
here in the early going. And you can also see Crystal Palace suffering some serious injury woes along with Brighton here in the early going of the season. So thank you for watching Match of the Day. I look forward to hearing your thoughts to episode one. Please hit the like button if you like what this looks like, if you like what I'm doing. Subscribe if you're new, and I am anxiously awaiting your comments down below. Guys and ladies, we will see you next episode here on Match of the Day, brought to you by Man in Blazer.